All right, thanks for having me. Um, my topic is uh, Mental Language Linking in Wikipedia, Global Dependency Explorer for Languages and Content. Um, I'd like to start by briefly referring to the last speaker, Tom, um, who, who kind of did um, the, uh, the excavation uh, method, because if we talk about how the language has evolved, um, we automatically, automatically get back to the question, well, how did language evolve? And, and, and apparently, um, language evolved um, through the hunter-gatherer period, um, where we all had um, to cling together and, and, and find a way to communicate um, in order to get, um, for example, a dinosaur to fall down and to eat and to get fruit and so on and so forth. So this is how humans got language in a nutshell. Well, over time, humans um, got dispersed, language got dispersed. Um, so different languages um, have evolved, and dialects have evolved, uh, have evolved, and a different stock of knowledge has evolved. So uh, languages um, have dispersed, but they are still in contact with each other because um, humans interact. Um, there are different institutional technologies um, of interaction that have developed. So, for example, trade, trade routes, or political modes of uh, dominance. Um, and when we talk about um, how languages evolve and how knowledge gets um, transferred today, we must take into account um, the web as um, a popular mode of engagement today. Um, so the web offers different um, kinds of inter modes of interaction, um, one of which is Wikipedia's interlanguage linking. Um, I want to briefly show um, um, what it enables and what it does. So um, Wikipedia, um, as you might be aware, um, has um, a lot of different language versions. It's available in 270 languages. Um, it has around 18 million articles. Um, 7,800 new articles um, are created per day, and 360,000 new edits are created per day. Um, the specific feature that I talk about is this one here. This is the interlanguage link. So um, what, you, what you have here is an entry on a, um, a Chinese internet meme um, called Grass Not Horse. Um, and as you can see on the left hand side, which represents the languages in which this entry is available in other languages, um, you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five other languages. So here we have the French version. And here we have the um, Cantonese version. So this gives us an, an idea of, of what an interlanguage link is on Wikipedia. Um, this is the, uh, um, the network of interlanguage links, of all inter interlanguage links that we have um, um, gathered together. Um, and this um, context structure um, represents um, 238 million interlanguage links, which basically means that on average every Wikipedia article is available in 13 different languages. This here is the individual context structure, which means um, the individual language and um, what kind of interlanguage inter linking context structure there is um, available. So if we zoom in further, we obviously get um, preferential attachments, which um, becomes obvious in the Spanish Wikipedia, the English, the German, and so on and so forth, also the French. Uh, one reason for that is uh, quite obvi obvious, um, it's the what I call the time demographic affordances, which basically means the Wikipedia, when the Wikipedia version was launched and how many um, people are um, contributing to it. So first, how many speakers do the language have um, and how many internet and Wikipedia users are there. All right, and when we zoom in further, um, we can actually see that there are some geolinguistic, uh, geographic and linguistic uh, clusters. So this is um, the Chinese Wikipedia, um, which has connections here. Obviously, this, this is the Cantonese. Um, this is classic Chinese. And then up here, we have lots of um, languages um, from the Asian region. So for example, Hindi, um, which we also see in the next slide. Um, this is the Hindi Wikipedia, um, which is uh, much more the, the margins of the network. And we see here the connections to Urdu as one of the languages in the region. Or up here we see Gujarati, um, 
So this is, a, this is an example for how um, those interlanguage links cluster geographically and linguistically. Um, the question that I, that I basically wanted to pose is um, what kind of knowledge tra transfer is there? Because you have to understand that an interlanguage link is not an automatic translation of the actual entry. It's just another representation in another language, which means it can be copied, it can be translated, but it also cannot. So, so what I was basically interested uh, in was to, to look behind that content, context structure and to see what kind of forces and dri drivers are there. Um, one interesting example I thought was that the French link to the English most. So that basically means most interlanguage names we find in that whole network is from French to English. So the interwiki article ratio is 72%, which basically means ev um, every third um, article um, of the French Wikipedia um, links to the English Wikipedia, which I thought is um, quite counterintuitive. And I talked to Jean-Baptiste in, in, in the break, and we were, we were thinking, what, thinking about what kind of um, reasons this could have. But um, so far, I think we, we, we still have to leave the question mark there. Um, by the way, the interwiki article ratio, the other way around, um, is 21%. So that means that, um, that um, from the English Wikipedia to the, uh, to the French Wikipedia, there are only 21% um, articles linked. Um, this can be explained, obviously, by the size of the, of the English Wikipedia. A second um, interesting example is and this is where I really zoom in here. Um, this, um, this has something to do with interviews and data, data that I collected um, um, right um, in the middle of um, Germany, in, to, uh, um, in the eastern part of Germany. HSB is um, a, so a Sorbian language, which basically means this is a Slavic language, 1,300 years old. And um, I, I looked at the linguistic profiles of the contributors there. Because it's a small Wikipedia, it allows me to do so. And it allows me to interview those people. And what I found is um, the interesting fact that this Wikipedia is basically run by language, language amateurs. Which means those people have no or only little knowledge of Sorbian. And yet they build up a stock of knowledge which represents the 1,300 year, years old language. Language. And finally, um, to talk a little bit more about the forces that are behind those kind of knowledge transfers, there was also an, um, a translation project um, of uh, Google and Wikipedia in 2010, where several million words of English Wikipedia entries were translated into the, into the Hindi, Hindi language. And um, I found, um, by looking at um, at the time analysis, I found that this also correlates with an increase, a stark increase, um, in the number of interlanguage links. All right, um, this is what the um, global dependency explorer of languages looks like. Um, it's a dynamic filter, so um, what we see here, and what I would like to explore more, because this is only a first step into a world map of knowledge, um, should at a later stage look a little bit more like this, which is um, a nice um, visualization from um, a Dutch university, two Dutch universities, which looked at the commercial trade routes, the exports from one country to another country. So, and I believe um, if we could um, repeat that process, but do it um, differently, obviously, we can also find out more about the modern knowledge trade routes. And I would very much like to hear um, your questions, suggestions on all that. Thank you very much. That was very quick. Thank you very much. Um, so one thing, it's the same, it's the same thing. You can see there is, uh, there's very interesting topics through the those networks. And I think the visualization crowd needs to get together and collaborate with yes. people who work on networks. Because, again, here, whenever it gets dense, matrices are interesting. And especially if you look at dynamics, you can do a lot of things on a table, right? a really long table, which you can't really do with no link diagrams. 
Um, so what are the questions of the audience? Okay. Is there a microphone? No, I don't, I don't need one. It's more for the record. It's, it's more a, a practical question. Okay. <laughs> Professional next thing. <laughs> <clears throat> no, the question is uh, how is the interlinking organized with Wikipedia? So are there, uh, let's say, uh, lots of, a number of articles which are not interlinked and have the same subject? Or who's, who is it? Is there 100% interlinked of articles or how is it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, um, I, actually, I didn't actually mention that. But how it works is um, a real world person adds a link by basically editing a Wikipedia page. So, if it, so for example, if you have the link, if you have the entry of Budapest, and it's not available in, say, French at the moment, someone who is able to make that link, to link that, um, can do that by editing it. So there we have a link from, um, say, the English version to the French version. This is one way um, into language link. And then there are automatisms, bots, um, who actually create, which actually create um, the uh, real link. So, but there needs to be a person who does it first, and then there there is a mechanism which adds to that. But do you know the number of uh, not interlinked uh, pages? Is there any kind of statistics about this? Good or, question. I don't know. Oh, you don't know. I don't know. It's okay. so, no question. But I, there's, but I believe there is much headroom. There's still much headroom there. Lots of headroom. Did he try to estimate the dynamics? So, which article was first? Because then you could have something like an import and export flow. Yes. Well, this is a, this this will actually be the next step because this is where it gets really interesting. This is where we can actually find out, um, for example, how this French English um, um, linking works. So yes, yes, this dynamic um, component will be next. Thank you very much. Um, I, is there one last question, or? No, no, no. Okay, so let's just continue with the next speaker. Let's thank uh, Thomas Petzl again.